everybody, welcome to Transformation Tuesday Bible Study. Today we're going to be discussing miracles versus magic, part four. If you haven't checked out part one through part three, you need to check it out. And before we begin, I'd like us to pray. By the name of Jesus, I pray that everybody watching comes to understand how powerful these miracles are and how you use them to bring people closer and closer to you, Lord. That there's no magic involved. They should never be attributed to the devil, especially if they're done the right way through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. We will be using the New King James Version of the Bible, but you can use any acceptable version. Let's start. Okay, so everybody, let's turn to Matthew chapter 12, verses 9 through 14. That's Matthew chapter 12, verses 9 through 14. Now, when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out. Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And it was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might destroy him. So here Jesus goes into the synagogue and he sees a man with a shriveled hand. And of course, the Pharisees, being the, uh, you know, legalists they are, asked him if it was okay or lawful in order to heal somebody on the Sabbath. And of course, Jesus responded back saying that, yes, it is. Because if you're a shepherd, wouldn't you want to protect your sheep? And since we humans are more valuable than animals, and we were made in God's image. Of course, it doesn't matter if you have a merciful deed, you should do it any day, whether it's the Sabbath or not. So it wasn't unlawful. So he had that man come, he told him, you know, to stretch out his hand and the man was healed and his hand was restored. Notice the word of God coming out of Jesus in the form of God, of course, in the male form of God healed that man and sometimes that's all it takes sometimes it just takes the word of God either you reading it or you hearing it from an anointed and appointed man or woman of God whether that's a pastor a prophet a prophetess an apostle an evangelist a teacher or just a kingdom citizen what is a kingdom citizen a kingdom citizen is a true believer who has the power of the Holy Spirit so that's what matters here and of course the Pharisees were enraged and then they plotted on how to kill him because he performed that miracle. And isn't that what happens today? People have that gift of miracles, whether that's deliverance or healing, and there's cessationists who say that it's not real. There are non-believers who say that it's not real. But what's even worse is these cessationists that are similar to Pharisees who say that that's not real or they attribute that power to Satan and not the power of the Holy Spirit, which again, if that healing was was real, that deliverance is real, and someone attributes attributes that to Satan, that is called blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So people have to be very, very careful with these things and make sure that to test them well and know that it's really from God. Again, Jesus did not ask for any payment. He didn't ask for anything to heal this uh, man through his words. Remember, Jesus is the word as well. And the power that, res that led to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that power, that Holy Spirit power is also in us. So if God anoints us to perform miracles, we have to do it and he will give you that unction. It's not like you're just gonna go and heal anybody and everybody. No, sometimes it's just particular people. Sometimes it's certain points in time, but he's the one who gives you that unction. And again, people who really have this gift of deliverance and healing, 
they never ask for payments. Yes, you can give them something just as a thank you, but they will never ask you because they really fear God and the power that they're using in order to do this is the power of the Holy Spirit, not their own flesh, not their own power. All right, let's continue. Let's continue on Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 30. That's Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 30. Then one was brought to him who was demon possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. So here, a man that was demon possessed and blind and mute was brought to Jesus. And of course, Jesus delivered him. And that's what people have to understand. Sometimes the reason why you have an illness or a sickness is because you are oppressed by a spirit, you're oppressed by a demonic force, or if you're not a believer, it's because you have a demon or a spirit. So you have to be delivered of that thing in order to believe, okay? Or you have to be delivered of that thing in order to be healed and believe, or even increase your faith if you're already a believer. And of course, when people saw this, they witnessed this. That's another thing. He did this in front of people so that they would witness it. And you're going to see why soon. So they would witness it. And they thought that he was a descendant of David and that he was the Messiah. That's what they were seeing because they saw the proof of it. They saw the miracle that he, that he performed on this person. Okay. And then, of course, the Pharisees heard this and they said, no, he healed him. And delivered him through the power of Beelzebub who's over the demons who's Beelzebub that is Satan again practicing um, you know blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that's what they were doing here and of course Jesus knew that they said this or knew their thoughts he didn't hear them but he knew that also shows the power the discerning power that Jesus had okay so he knew that they said this and he said well how you know, a kingdom divided cannot stand, all right? That's also us, us, you know, being the kingdom of God, we being divided, we cannot stand, and that's why we have a lot of problems. But here, <laughs> he's talking about Satan's kingdom. Satan cannot do what he needs to do through his demons if he's going to be delivering people from demons. That's his own kingdom. How is he going to do that? It's not rational. It's not logical. So there's no way that that could happen. Because all that's going to do is make matters worse for Satan because he's fighting against himself is what he's saying. Okay? And that he did this through the power of the Holy Spirit. He did this through the power of God, he said. That's how this guy was delivered. And then when you deliver somebody through the power of God, if you heal somebody through the power of God, the kingdom of God comes upon them. So the kingdom of God came upon this person. That person becomes a believer. That person believes the gospel. And if that person was already a believer, like we saw in our previous video where Dorcas was a believer and she was healed, that increases a person's faith. That increases the people's faith around them in the body of Christ. That edifies. Okay? Then not only that, you know, Jesus came to bind the strong man who is Satan. That's what he came to do in order to bring people to God through him. 
you know, that's why he came on this earth. He came to Satan's domain, which is this earth, in order to do that. Okay? And 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 that's what happened. And not only that, people who don't believe in Jesus, people who are against him, okay, people who are not for him are against him. And they will scatter. What does scatter mean? They'll become confused in everything. So that's another thing. When when Jesus or, you know, when he would deliver people of these demons, sometimes these demons will, come, will become confused in everything. They'll scatter. They'll move because they're against him. And if somebody has the power of God in them, they have the power of the Holy Spirit and God gave them that gift of performing miracles, whether that's healing or deliverance, those demons will scatter. They'll leave they'll leave. That person is going to become a believer that they did that to. That's also an important test. That's how you know that the person is not using the power of Satan. Did that person become a believer? Not saying that, you know, sanctification doesn't have to happen afterwards. Yes, it does after that person is delivered. But does that person now believe in God through Jesus Christ? That's going to show you that this person who receive deliverance, receive deliverance from a person who has the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's going to show you. And that's why we have to be very, very careful in how we test these things and measure and see if this was really the power of God working through that person. Notice, no magic was used here. Okay, this is not the same as using Reiki or one of those things or witchcraft and, or removal of a curse through a witch or whatever. No. Those things don't work, again, because that's the kingdom of Satan fighting against itself. It's not going to work. It's only going to make matters worse for that person. So it's very important that we understand these concepts. Let's continue. Okay, so let's turn to Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. That's Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, Not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So here Jesus is entire and side on. These are areas that are off the coast of the Mediterranean and um, they were Gentile nations that were very wicked. There was a lot of witchcraft going on and all this wickedness. And so, by the way, sometimes the Lord is going to send you to an unknown area, a scary area, okay, in order to bring somebody to God through Jesus Christ. That's what he's going to do. Whether that's through evangelism or a miracle, you know, he will give you that unction. And you'll know which gift that you have by then. But yes, he does send you to unknown territories in order to bring people to him. That is why apostles are still needed. That is why missions are still needed. Because sometimes that is what's needed, a miracle in order to bring somebody to him through Jesus Christ. Okay? And so he saw a woman there, and the woman was calling out to him. She called him Lord. She called him Son of David. This means that she respected him. She knew who he was. She needed his help in order for her daughter to be delivered of a demon. Mind you, even though she's a Canaanite woman, she also is a woman of Greek and Syrophoenician descent. So she is a Gentile. That's what that means, okay? And of course, Jesus was going away from her. And not only that, the, um, you know, he didn't answer her is what I mean. And the disciples told him to stay away from her because she kept chasing after them as well. 
And I think the reason why they did that is because once again, the area where, the, where they are, they're in Tyre and Sidon, which is a very wicked area. So they didn't have the discernment to, to see that this woman was already a believer. She already had faith in them. She had faith that they had the power of God in them to deliver her daughter. So they were afraid of the unknown, okay? And Jesus answered saying that he came to save the Jews. In Jesus's early ministry, it was to save the Jews and bring them to God through him, okay? Now, after that, of course, when he died and he resurrected, his charge to the disciples was to make disciples of all nations, okay? But at that point, he was trying to just go after the Jews, of course, and bring them to God through him. And, you know, the woman persisted. That's how strong her faith was. That's how much she went and worshiped him and said, I need help, begging for his help. And Jesus responded to her saying, well, you know, if you have dogs, you're going to feed children first, basically, meaning that he has to focus on the Jews first, you know, and she said, yeah, but even, uh, you know, dogs eat crumbs, meaning that she's willing to take whatever she has that much faith in the Lord. She has that much faith in his power. She has that much belief in him. And she's not even a Jew. She's a Gentile. And because Jesus saw that, he healed, delivered and healed her daughter and told her that, wow, that he was so amazed at her faith. And now the daughter is healed. So your faith means everything in terms of being delivered and healed. If you don't believe in the gift of deliverance, you're never going to be delivered. Okay. If you're not, if you don't believe in the gift of healing, you're not going to be healed. And what I mean, deliver, meaning that people who know that they need deliverance, but for whatever reason, they don't believe in that person's power. For whatever reason, they don't believe that people in the kingdom of God have the gift of deliverance. You know, they've been praying, they've been praying against this thing, but for some reason they just weren't delivered and they had to go to somebody to be delivered of that demon or that spirit that's causing um, a problem, okay? That's causing a health issue, it's causing a mental issue, whatever it is. But because they didn't believe in that power, because they don't believe that gift exists today, guess what? They missed out on their deliverance. So it's very important that we show that faith and that belief that it still exists and that God still works through people because he wants to, because he has a purpose to. And you know what? Sometimes we don't have to know what that purpose is because he's God and he knows what it is. And it will manifest later. You will see what that reason was. Okay? But we cannot control how the Lord moves. And this woman had enough faith to believe that no matter what, Jesus was going to heal her and she was going to make sure that her daughter got that healing. I mean, and so she still showed that belief and that faith and that is required. That is required when it comes to deliverance and healing. Okay, let's continue. to Matthew chapter 20 verses 29 through 34. That's Matthew chapter 20 verses 29 through 34. Now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. So Jesus and the disciples and the multitudes who followed him, they're leaving Jericho and they see these two blind men. One of them is named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, and the other one is not named. By the way, Bartimaeus is called out in uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 47. And 
and both of them were calling out to the Lord for his help. They called him Lord. They called him son of David. That means that they recognize that he's a Messiah. They could not see him. They had that blind faith that Jesus could help them, that he was a Messiah. And the multitudes told them to keep quiet, but they persisted. And that shows that we also have to persist no matter what doubt comes our way, no matter who tells us that we shouldn't believe in the gift of healing, that it comes, whether it comes from somebody else, we have to persist and believe if the Lord leads us to somebody who can do that. And so, of course, Jesus asked them, you know, what do you need from me? And they said that they want their sight restored. Jesus touched them and their sight was restored and they followed him. So sometimes all it takes is one touch, whether that is you studying the word, because remember, Jesus is also the word or praying or meditating over the word or receiving that gift of healing from somebody who has that gift. All they have to do is touch you sometimes because they have the Holy Spirit and that's how the gift is operating. And how do you know? Just like them, their strength, their uh, faith was strengthened and they followed him. So if you're already a believer and you're going through something, all right, and you're healed, it's only going to strengthen your faith. Your walk with God through Jesus Christ is going to be even stronger. If you're not a believer, you're going to be a believer if that healing was genuine through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that's the whole purpose of these gifts is to lead people to God through Jesus Christ. That's the purpose. And that testimony is also going to edify others in the body of Christ. That testimony is, other, is also going to bring other people to God through Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important that we don't doubt this because there's so many different avenues. The avenues are endless when it comes to God. The avenues are endless, so we cannot sit there and say this gift doesn't exist because it bears so much fruit once it's authentic. Let's continue. Everybody, let's turn to Mark chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. That's Mark chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. Again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, he came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. And they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened and the impediment of his tongue was loosed. And he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one. But the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. So Jesus left Tyre and Sidon and went through Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. Now, Decapolis is also the area where that man who was even possessed with legions of demons went and spread that testimony that Jesus delivered him from those demons. Now, he saw this man who was mute and deaf, who was actually brought over to him, and they were asking for Jesus' help. And Jesus took the man away from the multitude again. Sometimes the Lord is going to put it on the person who has this gift of healing to do the healing in private. And Jesus had a reason for this. We're going to see why later. So anyway, he took the guy aside and he uh, touched his ear. Not only that, he spat on his head and touched his tongue, told the man to look up and his, he was now able to hear and he was able to speak. His speech was restored. Sometimes the Lord also has people who have this gift of healing through the power of the Holy Spirit to use both methods, meaning touch and also God's word or their words. And again, these can be paraphrased from the Bible or just simply their word because they have the power of the Holy Spirit working within them. And so all, all Jesus said was look up. So the same way somebody who has that gift can do that. Okay. And then not only that. 
he told them not to tell anybody. After they saw this, they saw everything, he told them not to tell anybody. Why? Because Jesus was being hunted down by Pharisees, of course. They were always plotting to kill him because they always said that he's not really the son of God. He said he's not performing miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's performing them by the, the power of Satan. So, and he had a mission. He knew that there was a, an appointed time for him to go to that cross and be sacrificed for our sins and for our redemption. And so he didn't want anything to impede that. But of course, they were so excited by what he did. And they went and told everybody. They didn't listen to him. And again, they didn't do that maliciously. They were excited. Anybody would be excited if they saw that kind of miracle happen to somebody. Okay? That their ears were open. They're now able to speak. They're able to hear. You know? They're able to um, be closer to God through Jesus Christ because of that. So this was amazing to them that this guy was restored. But sometimes when the Lord tells us not to speak, there's a reason for it. There are people who may not believe in miracles. There are people who will tell you it didn't happen and they will cause you to start doubting your faith. So sometimes you tell certain people, sometimes you don't tell certain people. It all depends on your discernment and what you discern that God is telling you to do at the time. All right, let's continue. Okay, so let's turn to Mark chapter 8, verses 22 through 26. That's Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him, and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up, and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house, saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. So here Jesus went to Bethsaida, and by the way, Bethsaida is also the hometown of Andrew, Philip, and Peter. And a man was brought to him who was blind. They wanted him to be touched by Jesus because they knew of what Jesus could do. They've heard about him. And so Jesus took the man out of town. Again, sometimes healings are done in private and Jesus followed that Holy Spirit unction to take him out into town in order to perform this healing. And so he spat on the man's eyes, then touched the man's eyes and asked him what he saw. And he saw trees that looked like men walking. So he couldn't see clearly is what that means. So then Jesus, you know, touched him again and told him to look up. And then the man was able to see everybody clearly, okay? So it's also important to know that sometimes it takes more than one action. Here he touched him once, touched him again, and also used his word in order to heal the man and he was healed, his sight was restored, okay? And sometimes that's gonna happen for people who have that gift of healing. Sometimes not only that, it's gonna take multiple avenues, it's gonna take prayer. Okay, it's going to take studying God's word, reading God's word, meditating on God's word in order to receive your healing. It may even take you going to a doctor to receive that healing. No matter what, it means that you have to follow the unction of the Holy Spirit as to what to do, um, you know, when that happens. When you're praying for somebody to get healing or lead them to the healing that they need or if you have that gift of healing. Okay, and once he was healed, he told him not to tell anybody. Again, he wanted to keep his secret. You cannot give your testimony to everybody. You cannot act on the flesh and do that. You have to follow the Holy Spirit at all times. That's why you have it. Because there are people that you can tell and there are people that you can't tell. There are people who will doubt you, who don't believe in that gift of healing. They don't believe in it and they'll tell other people that you were lying. And that may prevent other people from receiving that healing from that same person who you received that healing from. So it's important that we listen to that. And here Jesus did that, of course, like I said before, he had an appointed time of when he was supposed to be crucified and he was being uh, chased and plotted against by the Pharisees. They really wanted to kill him before time. And so we had to escape them. So we have to follow God's unction no matter what. The Holy Spirit unction within us. Of when we're supposed to give a testimony, 
who we give the gospel to, who we give our testimony to, it's very important because you could be messing up somebody's path to salvation if you don't heed his warning and his unction as to when to do that. So you have to pray for God to increase your discernment at all times so you can clearly hear his voice and understand what sign and what what he's telling you before you give your testimony to the wrong person. Let's continue. All right, so everybody turn to Luke chapter 4, verses 31 through 37. That's Luke chapter 4, verses 31 through 37. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbaths. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke amongst themselves, saying, What a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. So Jesus was in Capernaum, and he went to the synagogue there, and, you know, these men were astonished at his teaching. He was teaching them. They were astonished because he was teaching with so much authority and confidence and ease about the kingdom of God and the kingdom agenda. And he was doing that obviously through the power of the Holy Spirit within him. So remember, when you're talking, you have to be doing everything with the power of the Holy Spirit, whether that's giving your testimony, teaching, prophesying, being a pastor, whatever that is, it's all through the power of the Holy Spirit because that is where the authority comes from. And then they saw, Jesus saw a man who was, you know, demon possessed, he had an unclean spirit and the unclean spirit was speaking through this man begging the Lord not to destroy him saying that he knew who he was the demons even know who Jesus is so it's not also enough to know who Jesus is you have to be a believer but they know who he is they know that he can destroy him. and that's also why we have to stay holy we have to continue to live repentant. We have to continue to live the word so that these demons can attack us. These spirits can attack us because they will know that we have the power of God within us. Okay. That same power that uh, led to Jesus being resurrected from the dead. And so Jesus, with that authority, told that demon to come out of him. The demon came out. The man flung to the floor, even though he was, and he wasn't hurt. But the demon came out. Now, with the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit, people who have that gift of deliverance can do that with just their word. They can deliver somebody from a demon, from an unclean spirit with just their words. Because they have that power, they have that anointing, they have the Holy Spirit, and that is how they're working. They're not using any other, you know, means to do that. Okay? And of course, the people in the synagogue saw this. So imagine, now he did this in front of people. He did this in front of the people in the synagogue because he wanted to show them how his authority works. He wanted them to believe even more. They were already amazed at his authority when he was teaching, but he wanted them to see the evidence of his authority. So that's an example of where he did this in front of people. And they were so amazed at his authority, at the fact that with just his word, that he was able to cast out this unclean spirit, okay? And of course, they went and told everybody in town. He didn't tell them not to tell anybody. This time, they went and told everybody. And he didn't tell them not to. He, didn't, he also didn't tell them to, but he did that in front of them for reasons. They could understand his authority. They could understand how his power works. And they can believe in him. They can strengthen their belief in him, okay? Let's continue. Continue on Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. That's Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. 
And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath and he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. So here Jesus is in the synagogue teaching, and there's a woman who's bowed over, she's crippled, she can't stand up straight, and Luke noted that she had the spirit of infirmity. Sometimes when you're going through an illness or you're going through a problem, it's actually a spirit that's causing it. If it's not biological or something that you did or, you know, some kind of chemical imbalance, whatever it is. And so that was her issue here. And so Jesus told us she was loosed of that spirit. Then he touched her and she was able to stand up straight. So he used two things. He used his word and he used his touch. And people with this gift of healing, they can use both. They could use one or the other. It all depends on what unction they're given and they're all doing this through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the authority that comes from the Holy Spirit. That's also why it's important for people who have this gift to continue to also live the word as well because the more they do that, the stronger that they're going to get at their gift as well and knowing when to use it, how to use it, and really obeying God's instructions. And so the ruler of the synagogue saw this and he said, oh no, she should go and be healed on another day because it's the Sabbath. They're not supposed to work that day. And Jesus called him a hypocrite because they would even take their ox or their donkey to water, which is work. So even though this is work, this is something that this woman needs. She's a daughter of Abraham. She's part of that covenant. And so of course, Jesus healed her. And his opponents, the people, the ruler of the synagogue, plus other people who agreed with that ruler, they were put to shame. And everybody glorified. The whole crowd glorified in the work that Jesus did and the miracles that he was performing. So what does that mean? They became believers. That's what that means. And that is the point of these miracles, to heal, to bring people closer to God through Jesus Christ, to bring people to God through Jesus Christ. And sometimes that is needed. And so we, as a body of Christ, can't stop that. We cannot say that this gift doesn't exist. We cannot dictate how God works and when he wants to work. We can't do that. We can't constrict him in the way that he works in order to bring people to him. All right? I want to thank you so much for joining us. Join us next week as we talk about another spiritual gift. And after that, we will be doing Miracles versus Magic, part five. Thank you and have a blessed week.